well, I hope there's no one in the witness protection program because this is going to be recorded. <laughs> Um, you all, thank you so much for joining us today. It has been about a year and a half before we were that we were shut and that we can have in-house events again. And we're so excited to uh, start our programming. And what, while we were shut for a year and a month, we were allowed to reimagine the Museum of Native American History. We we're able to create a virtual platform so you can share this with other people. And um, our, our uh, family of presenters that are at the museum, I mean, all of their presentations are recorded thanks to Animate Media Productions. Evan, I can't thank you enough for having us to keep these to go out to future generations to learn. Um, we do have, uh, this is part two of Art of the Cherokee Language. Um, before we start, we always like to remind people they'll be watching this later that we're broadcasting from the ancestral lands of the original people of Arkansas, the Quapa, the Osage, and the Caddo. And we always want to remind people that, you know, that we honor those people of the past that survived. We honor the people that walk among us now that are everything from architects to doctors to astronauts. And then we want to parlay that and to future generations that will be you know, leading us forward. So we hope that what we do today honors the first people. And with that, I don't want to take up any more time. It is always my honor to have Lawrence Panther in the house. He is so wonderful, so kind, so talented, and now you're at the University of Arkansas in the Language Arts Department. With that, Lawrence Panther. Thank you very much. Uh, it's, it's a pleasure to be here at the Museum of Native American History, and I'm glad to see everybody here, and I'm going to give a presentation on uh, some uh, Conjugations and some uh, uh, five uh, five uh, five categories of a uh, Cherokee, uh, uh, like uh, the liquid and living, long and rigid and neutral, and the flexible. And just give you a little bit examples of uh, conjugations of them, so kind of get the idea of what what it's like. Uh, uh, with uh, seeing these uh, written in the, uh, I'll write them in phonetics and also in the uh, syllabaries. And I believe uh, she's going to give you a copy of, uh, so you can follow along. No, that's a piece of paper, yeah. Anyway, while she's doing that, I'll, uh, I'm going to uh, go ahead and get comfortable to take my coat off, I guess. You know. They gave me this T-shirt last time I was here, so I wear it again when I come here. <laughs> Maybe they'll give me a different color next time. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, anyway, while she's uh, doing that, let me go ahead and give you a little bio about myself. Uh, I'm uh, originally from Kenwood, Oklahoma, and that's uh, between south, it's about south uh, west of Jay, Oklahoma, and kind of back east of Pryor, Oklahoma, about, about 20 miles, I guess, a little community. And uh, when I was growing up, they are just all uh, Cherokee speakers were just about in a way, except the store owners, you know, they, they were uh, people who spoke English, and I didn't get to go in the store very much, or didn't hardly get to go into town either, and we lived up on top of the hill, and we didn't have no uh, running water or electric or anything like that, and it was, uh, I think about it now, you know, it was, it was nothing, you know, it's, uh, I, uh, I can adapt to that when electricity goes off at the house. And my son can't. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we didn't have any uh, plumbing or anything like that, you know. And, but we had to use a lot of imagination when I was growing up. For instance, uh, we didn't have no toys or anything like that. So we had to just use blocks, you know, like a two by four blocks for a car or something like that. And we'd use a garden hole for a... Uh, making our little roads for, we had this tree, shade tree there where me and my little brother would play all the time. And uh, we would use that uh, hole there and uh, we'd use that like for uh, like a grader or a bulldozer or something like that, make our little roads to there. And we would gather some twigs and stuff like that. And we would build little 
little houses out them twigs, stuff like that. And, and that was our little community there. And when we got done, you know, we'd, we'd go over and get our little sister. She's only about two, three years old. Let her walk through there, through our village, and she would just step on our little buildings to would act like, hey, there's a giant coming through here. <laughs> or uh, or we'd sometimes we'd go get a bucket of water, you know, pour it across our little community and act like it was a flood coming through there, stuff like that. And, you know, we just used a lot of imagination growing up. And we had tires, you know, we would roll, push them around. Those were our vehicles. And we would uh, put dust in it, or dirt in there as we push it along, that dust would fly off, you know, and then after a while it turns to pebbles, and we'd act like we ran out of gas. So I would push my tire over there, and my brother would push his tire next to mine and get, get a handful of dirt, you know, I'd throw it in mine, then help me push that tar, and <laughs> I'd get going again, you know, stuff like that, you know. It was, it was uh, thanks to uh, using the imagination, then our, uh, we had a, a, a persimmon tree, and just only that tree there, leaves were was our currency in bills. So, so <laughs> I had a lot of leaves in the back of my pocket. You know, sometimes <laughs> it's like I had some money, and we used buttons for coins and stuff like that. So, I really don't know where you know, growing up there on top of the hill, didn't go nowhere and things like that. I think about that sometimes. Maybe I got my, our, maybe we got our ideas from our brothers and sisters who were going to school. They would come back and talk about it. I believe that's probably where we got our ideas. And uh, our mom and dad, and I don't remember ever calling my dad uh, a doda. You know, that's how you say dad in Cherokee or father a doda. E d o d a a doda. Let me write that. And her father, e do da, e. And our mom, you know, her it's a g. But whenever did whenever did call her a g, I would just call her mom. Just like you're saying, <clears throat> I think we got our ideas from, we heard our uh, brother's older siblings saying mom or dad, you know. Probably at, probably at school they asked her, who's your mom and dad? Then they brought that English word back to us, mom or dad. So that's where we picked it up. And, but these two words are uh, mom and father. And uh, after a while, when you see, get your paper, <clears throat> I'll have this, this T-S-I, <clears throat> Excuse me. It's a J form. It sounds like a J. Like, like this is G. G. You'll look like that. I mean, that's the way you can pronounce it. <clears throat> and I'll write the uh, vowels up here here in a minute. The sounding vowels, so you can get a better idea uh, how the sound goes with the consonant. And uh, I want to introduce uh, this lady over here, Linda Carroll Jones. Linda, would you kind of just come up here and kind of introduce yourself, what you are, because I don't want to uh, give you a, a wrong title at the university. <laughs> okay. Um, hi, I'm Linda Jones. I'm the chair of World Languages at the University of Arkansas. And I can't tell you how excited we are to have Lawrence Panther teaching at the University of Arkansas. Uh, he's teaching one class this semester, Cherokee one, and in the spring he'll be teaching Cherokee two. And our goal is to have Lawrence be full-time at the U of A at some point in the not too distant future. So we're just tickled pink to have Lawrence there. And 
he got to go to the game yesterday and yeah. do the Wu Pig Suey against Missouri. So second game, got to second game, yeah, good for him. Anyway, I, I don't want to hold him up. Oh, uh, here for uh, Linda. Uh, this is a pointer. I'm gonna give you an early Christmas present. Uh, this is a pointer. I'm on. I'll give it to you when I get done. Okay, but this is yours though. Whenever we're done, <laughs> let me use it one time at least. <laughs> Okay, did everybody get their papers and stuff like that? Uh, okay, okay, we'll start off with the, the, the vowel sounds. That way you'll kind of know what, how it goes. You just, you just want to add your consonant with the vowel sound to make, to make the sound. Okay, the, uh, the first letter here is, you pronounce it like all. All, e, e, o, u, a. The all can sound like all or father, the all sound. All or father. Then the A can sound like egg or mat. A, not E, A. Remember a while ago I said edgy? I spelled with the E T S I, A. Okay, and this one here is E, E. Sound like this letter there, but it's it's E. People get mixed up quite a bit with this right here. The first learners, when you first begin to start learning your your uh, phonetics. You people get a lot of people get mixed up with this these two vowel sounds, the A and the E. Ink, sink, E, E sound. Okay, the O, open. It's not O, it's O. Oh, like saying, oh, okay, I remember that now. Oh, open. Then this bottom one here, osta. Osta, that's an example of saying good in Cherokee. Good, osta. Oh, we're not saying osta, we're saying osta. Osta. And this, the next one's a ooh, like a double O, ooh. You can say like look or good, look, the ooh sound. Okay, the, the last one is uh, the V, it's uh, uh sound. Like in English, the U, uh, it's like saying under or understand. On the letter, on, on the word in there, I got hodla, the top one, hodla. That means where, hodla, where. Then uh, dale, that means pond, pond of water. Uh, dale. Okay, those, those are your sounds, or your vowel sounds, and all, a, e, o, u, and a. Uh. Then you got your uh, consonants. Uh, I'll just 
I'll just use them three for right now. But anyway, the, the H, it's, it can go with that uh, all to make it a ha. Your H, your H plus with your all be ha. Then your L plus your uh, the uh sound be la, then your M plus your O is going to be more, so forth like that. That's the sound for making Cherokee. And before we go on, I'd like to thank uh, Tana Washington. We, we best, or Tana, she brought me a shirt. Oh, I don't wear it that way, do I? Looks like this. Everybody's been so nice to me lately. Oh, I can't believe it. <laughs> Even my granddaughter gave me a gift. A little bitty baby bucket. <laughs> Grandchild. Okay, uh, on here you have a... Uh, works. I once wanted to do a PowerPoint, but for some reason my PowerPoint on my laptop wouldn't... It wouldn't let me uh, download it, so I had a... Uh, write it out. That's how come I gave everybody, you know, a follow along sheet here. Let me kind of go ahead and finish off my uh, bio and we'll get, start with this. Uh, I was probably about six years old uh, when I began learning how to speak English. It was when I went to school, I started, uh, J school, I started learning how to speak English. Other than that, all through the first four, five years, six years, you know, that's all I spoke was Cherokee. I didn't know, I didn't know how to speak English at all, not at all, until I started going to school. Then I started learning. It was pretty tough. So, uh, a lot of times, you know, this, the, the students would be out there playing on play, uh, playgrounds, and I'd be inside in the classroom uh, cleaning off the crayon marks off the table and stuff like that because I couldn't, I couldn't understand what that teacher was telling me or saying to me. And I'd get mad, I'd get that crayon and mark all over the table. That's <laughs> I'd come out and stay in recess and they clean my own mess up, I guess you could say. <laughs> and, but after about third grade, you know, my mom got, she couldn't take care of us. She got sick. So they sent off, send, send some of us off to the Indian boarding school. So I went to boarding school at Wyandotte. They had a boarding school there, went to eighth grade. And I went there until uh, eighth grade, and that's where I started getting immersed into speaking English a lot more. And when I got there, I thought, well, these, these uh, other students, they, they can talk pretty good, you know. I guess they were talking good, because I didn't know, because I didn't know myself, you know, how well you know, they were speaking. But there's some, of, some of the things, you know, that I learned there, you know, like, like the boy made me cry one time, and was that a boy come over and say, "Hey, did it hurt your feelings?" And I didn't know what I didn't know what that meant. Feelings can't hurt, and I know he made me cry, you know. But in English, I didn't know how it was uh, phrased. He asked me, "Did he make Did he uh, hurt your feelings?" And I just said, "Yeah." So and that boy, he went to God, went over and made that boy cry. <laughs> hurt his feelings. <laughs> so things like that, you know. Uh, uh, that's how I start understanding, you know, what the conversation was like, stuff like that. But the reading part, though, once I figured out the alphabets, and uh, I could uh, I could read, I could read pretty good. They told me I could in a way. And but the thing is, though, I didn't know what I read about. It's just like if I write something here in phonetics, and if I wrote a sentence. And you all read it, you know. I don't, I, well, maybe you know you might know what I, what, I'm, what I wrote, but anyway, my my position was like that. I didn't know what I read, but I could read. It sounds funny, but that's what uh, what happened to me. And I just had to start learning uh, how things were and situations and stuff like that. Start understanding things like that. It took a long time, and, but. I got through there with eighth grade, then I went to a high school, another boarding school, Tahlequah. 
I finished uh, high school over there. And all that time, I wasn't using my language that much. Then when I got out of high school, I went to go work out in the oil fields for about five years. Then when I went down, I came back, back in Jay area, northeastern Oklahoma area. And all my brothers, everybody else is still talking fluently. And uh, I was having trouble. I could understand everything, but I couldn't, I couldn't register what there was, yeah, how to speak again. My, my tongue wasn't there. So I had to keep practicing, keep trying to talk. I made a lot of mistakes again, but I finally got back to where you know, I could start speaking fluent again. And so it, it took a little while to do that. And so I've just been keeping up with that. And all my uh, sisters and brothers and all them, they were you know, still fluent speakers. And that's where I would go, you know, go talk to my sister and her and her husband, it's all they done was just spoke Cherokee all the time. I'd go there and start talking to them. And, and then in uh, my mother-in-law, uh, the very first day I, first day I met her, uh, I said something to her in Cherokee. She spoke back. And ever since then, for about next 30 years, you know, she, unfortunately she passed away. Next 30 years or so, it's all, every time we talked to each other, it's all we did was just spoke Cherokee. Never once we spoke English to each other. It was always Cherokee every time. And, and my wife, she, uh, she understands, but some reason she'll, so if not, now she'll blurt out a phrase. Like she'll tell me, go cook, I'm hungry, or something like that. So, or I'm hungry, or are you hungry, or something like that. But she won't, she won't carry a conversation with me, do I don't know why. She says she, she's afraid she'll make a mistake. I said, well, this is between you and I. I'll correct you. So maybe she'll, she probably knows more than I think. I think, and so <laughs> I'll leave it at that for right now. <laughs> On that, first, on that first page there, uh, uh, I got some subjects there. Flexible, liquid, longer rigid, and living, and neutral, and solid, and conjugating, and uh, prefixes. The uh, prefix paper there has got to look like two blocks. Did y'all get that? It's got two blocks. Does she have time to, to print those off or not? There's set A and set B. On the, uh, the top, uh, I don't have one. But, uh, on the top uh, block there, square there, those are uh, set A. Those are your nouns. I mean, excuse me, those are your well, pronouns. They're uh, also uh, uh, your prefixes. They, uh, they got the 10 prefixes there, most commonly used. In, I'm just going to use just the one on the first, pers first person, on the G, the very top one. I think that paper has J-I on her, G. And, uh, but anyway, that's the same as equivalent to TSI I had up here a while ago. So we run across the TSI, it's going to be G sound. And that G, TSI, J-I. First person, be yourself or me. Everyone be, everybody else be excluded. In your uh, ending suffixes there on the right hand there, on the four, four basic ones. The present tense will be in with the all. In your uh, habitual tense, uh, what's going in with the O-E, O-E. Habitual tense, what I mean by that is that Christmas is always in December. Your birthday is always in a certain month. It's always a habitual thing. Always, in other words. Like, then your uh, remote past is your uh, E. It's something that happened, but we're not being uh, specific when it happened. Like if you said, oh, I went to the store yesterday. Well, you're not telling me what time or, you know, or anything like that, or what store you went to. You just, you just went. It's a remote past. It's just out there. In the SD, future progressive, that's something that's going to happen in the future. Like if you're going to tell somebody, I'll be at Walmart. So you're telling them that, oh, Walmart, do we get the I'll be over there. We get the That's a future tense. Progressive. 
Okay, uh, we'll start off with the, um, the H and H slash S to be he or she, okay? The H slash S, he or she. Okay, first one, uh, the flexible. It can be like paper, you know, paper, or a cloth, like a shirt, or a string, you know, like my shoestrings. Anything like that, that's flexible. Okay, you know, cloth, you know, like right here, example, he or she wants a towel. I'll call you a thing. Ooh, dooley, huh? That's what it's saying. Ooh, dooley, huh? Wants. Ooh, dooley, huh? Wants. And I got it written in syllabus also. I'll call you a thing. Ooh, dooley, huh? Okay, and your stem is, first one is a none, none. That's the root of the word, okay? Right here you got G. First one, G na ne ha. G na ne ha. Al coyote. It's saying, I'm giving he or she the towel right now. It's got this uh, present tense. G na ne ha. Right now. G na ne ho e. Always give him a towel. Always. O e. The habitual tense. O e. Always give him a towel. I did. I did give her a towel. He or she a towel. Okay. Then the fourth one. Alls coyote. Alls coyote's towel. Okay. Some, that means something to dry off with in Turkey. You know, it's a descriptive. I will be giving he or she a towel. Future progressive, I will be. Okay, uh, second page. Neg, N-E-G will be your, uh, your stem. <clears throat> I look at the stem like this. I mean, the, uh, these, three, uh, these three parts here. The ground part there would be one, then your stem, then result is your flower. That's the way I look at this here, these conjugations. I mean, these, uh, uh, well, I guess you can call it like the conjugation. That's the way I picture it. Okay. To go get, that's what it says. Wijineg, Wijineska. I'm going over getting it. I'm going over get it. Right now, I'm just what I'm going to do. That's what it's saying to all. Okay, to all is a present tense. I'm going to do it right now. That's what you're saying. Wijineska in. Always go get it. Always go get whatever flexible it could be. Newspaper. You always go to the, out there on the lawn, get your newspaper. Would you ask uh, in? I went and got it. That's what saying, the past tense. Would you need, would you, uh, would you ask guess then? I will be. I'm going to drink my coffee at first and I'm going to go out there and go get that newspaper right there in the lawn. Would you need a guess then? Right? Future progressive. That's what's going to be happening. You're not saying, you're not saying, oh, in about five minutes I'm going to go get it. You're just saying, oh, I'm just going to go get it. Okay. A liquid. It could be water, coffee, oil, whatever. And the stem for that will be uh, negi, negi, negi. Actually, you know, some of these stems, there's uh, about three or four different stems I could use, but you know, I went ahead and just used these here because there's lots of ways you can say things in Cherokee. But I'm just, I just kind of went down to these here. 
Good, and, uh, and I forgot to mention, before we go any further, like I said, that G is a uh, first, first person on your, uh, on your set of verbs there, up there on top block. All those, all those uh, prefixes there, like G, N, E, E, D, O, G, O, S, D, see all those right there? All them will fit into this, uh, with the stem and the uh, ending suffix. Like, uh, let's say, uh, uh, oh, like with Janice, go in, okay? You can go to the next one, you can say, in, in, go in, you and I. ED, we all go get it. EG, y'all go get it. Osti, you and I. Then second person, Sti, Sti and S go on. You, you two can, just you two now, nobody else. In Cherokee, Sti is a dual, they call it dual. Even though in English it's plural, but in Cherokee it's just two, two people, that's it. Sti. You can't be three people, it's going to just be just two people. And then uh, Sti and uh, EG, I believe that next one, EG and S go in. See, you know, all these here will work, fit in there. Then you can uh, change it either either one of them to the ending suffixes and it'll still work. They all fit, all these prefixes. All you gotta do is just pick out a prefix and put your stem and any in those ending suffixes, you'll have a phrase. I've been, I've been working on a, uh, some uh, stems and trying to think up all I can, all the stems I can think of it and, uh, for the verbs. And I believe I got my, maybe uh, 400 of them, a little bit over 400 uh, stems, you know, that uh, you can add the uh, prefix, stem, and the hidden suffixes. And hopefully, you know, uh, when I get more time, I can uh, write a book on it, you know, with these here. Make, make, uh, make turkey uh, writing, something like conjugation, real easy, a lot easier. And, it's uh, <clears throat> it's getting to the point where I don't know if I already wrote that or not now, so I have to, I'm gonna have to try to get them out in alphabetical order. A lot of work though, trying to think like that. So sometimes middle of the night I wake up and I start thinking about that, and I have to get up and go into my office and go write it down right quick, because hopefully I wasn't just dreaming. <laughs> Okay, I'll just repeat these here. With Janeska, habitual. Janeska, I am going to get it. With Janeska, I was. With Janeska, I will be. Okay. Okay, liquid and water, coffee and oil, and whatever we said. Uh, <clears throat> I, wrote, I wrote a little sentence here. Ama, Ama, Duli, huh? He or she wants water. Okay. Ama, with Janeki, huh? Vajinegi, ha, I'm getting the water, present tense. Ama, Vajinegi, ho, eh, always go get water. Ama, Vajinegi, ha, eh, always getting water. Ama, 
Ojinegi's hissing, I will be getting water. And again, all your prefixes there will fit into that, to that uh, stem, that negi. Just those four I read right there, and you, all your prefixes, all 20 of them, or 10 of them. So you, you can do some math, you know, like I said, I've I done about 400 of those, uh, these uh, stems, and you times that with these 10 said A verbs, and with these four here. Actually, there's, there's eight all together, these Indian suffixes. So you do your math on those, that's, that's a lot of phrases. Okay, give water to na ne ha, na ne. Ama, chi na ne ha. I'm giving them water, he or she water. Ama, chi na ne ha. Always give them water, always give them water. Ama, chi ne ne ha. I gave them water, him or her water. Ama, chi na ne ha. Chi na ne ha. I will begin them. Here she water. And again, all those, every one of those prefixes will fit in here to say that. Edi, eni, eji, sti, oji, every one of them will fit just perfect in here. Okay, long and rigid, it's like pencil twig or log. It's like, I'm using an example, using, like if I have a marker in my hand or a pencil, anything that writes, okay? Or go away low D. Go away low D, that means any, any uh, like ink pen or marker or Pencil, anything that writes, you can use a stick mark on the uh, on the ground. That could be go huelo dote. Go huelo dote. Chindo, huh? Ink pen. Go huelo dote, chindo, huh? I'm holding a pen. This is long and rigid. Go away, Lodi. Chin do ho e. When I'm writing, when I'm writing, I'm always using a pen. I'm always holding the pen. I'm always using the pen the right way. Okay. Go away, Lodi. Chin do ho e. I was. I was holding it. Go away, Lodi. Chin do he este. I'm about to get it. Now I got it. Go away, Lodi. Go away, Lodi. Chin do haste. Now I have it. De. Hand to. To hand something to somebody. Go away, Lodi. Chi de. Chi de. Give him to somebody, him or her. Chi de. Go away, Lord, do te, chi de. Go away, Lord, go away, Lord, do te, chi de, chi de, hoi. Always give this to him. Like that one boy at school, he's always losing pencils, so I'll use this word on him. Here. And always losing his homework, who's, I don't know how. I asked him one day, what do you do with your papers anyway? You build fire with it or something? And, Okay, go well or don't they? Chin do ha I had it. I don't have it now. Go well or don't they? Chin do he stay. Okay, that's what I've done this while ago. I will get it. Okay, next one. Living or animate, like us, insects, anything, fish, anything that survives. <clears throat> as a living specimen. Uh, okay, kane, kane, it's like to give away, 
Connie, live thing, Connie. Okay. We saw again, G Connie, huh? We saw cat. Okay. Again, it's something young. So it's a kitten. In this, in this case, it's a kitten. We saw again, it's a kitten. That's what I'm doing. I'm giving her, him or her a kitten, giving it away. We saw again, when my cat has litter, I always give him a kitten from there, from that litter, him or her. We saw again, I gave him a kitten, past tense. We saw again, I gave him when a mother, mother cat has her kittens, I'm going to be giving her, him or her, a kitten. That's what they're saying. His future progressive. Okay? The other is daily to help. That's when somebody helps one another. It's still animate. Okay? He or she, she daily, huh? I'm helping that person. He or she. Right now, present tense to all. He or she, she stayed ho in. I'm always helping that person. He or she. He or she, she stayed ho in. I was helping them. I was helping that person. I helped them with their homework. I helped them carry the grocery and etc. He or she, she's daily hasty. I will be helping. I will be helping. See how all these uh, Indian suffixes, they're just the same. But the only thing that makes a difference is the stem in there. That's what changes uh, the, uh, the action. <clears throat> it's like here, daily and helping. Because there's, there's a lot of, lot of uh, stems that could be placed here instead of a uh, staley and it still would work out using g and uh ending suffixes and they'll still work like i say any ed og you can say any staley ha any staley ho ed staley ha ed staley ho and so forth and ah staley ha ah staley ho in ah staley hasty third person will be helping the other person On that, uh, all prefixes except third person ga on this one here. You cannot say gadi gad gadel steli ha. That that doesn't make sense. So it has to be all. You got all or god are in third person, so all has to work in this one. But <clears throat> you can it can go from ga to ga to make it to make it sound right. Go steely, huh? No, go steely, huh? Okay. But we'll leave it at gar right now. Okay, yeah. Uh, the neutral stuff is uh, solid. Solids, uh, you know, uh, like rock or tabletop. I'm going to table. Uh, tree and uh, water and ice. What well, I uh, put parentheses in that water, ice, because water will go, turn into ice when it's cold enough, so it's a neutral thing, because it's, now it's a solid. The ice, that block of ice is now a solid, from liquid to solid, when it freezes. It's the, <clears throat> it's kind of vice versa on with the, uh, like the snow and the hail, your sleet. It's solid when it comes down, and it's not flexible, it's solid. The sleet's solid, or like hail, it comes down, then after a while, you know, it gets to the ground, you know, it melts to water. So it's, it's, uh, it's neutral, you know, it's either liquid or it's solid, or both at one time. And uh, like mud, when it rains, <clears throat> when it rains, you know, it, it gets all, mm, I don't know, uh, almost liquid, it's, it's kind of hard to say what mud is, it's almost solid or liquid, but when it dries up, you know, it kind of turns into solid stuff. 
But cement, that's easy, say. You mix that motor, then when you apply it, then it dries up and turns solid, right? Okay. Then, I got boiled egg on there. <laughs> I, can, I can cook that. <laughs> Because uh, it's soft, it's liquid in there, the yolk and stuff in there is liquid, right? And as you boil it, you know, it gets, it gets they call it hard boiled egg, which actually is not hard boiled, but, you know, but then, but you, uh, but the outer part after you take the shell off, you know, it's still kind of flexible, still kind of uh, soft, you know, so that's that, the neutral part. And, <clears throat> Example I got down here, Odala Chutaskis. Uh, that's uh, lava, you know, before the volcano exploded. That's what I'm saying, Odala. That's the mountain, Odala mountain. Chutaskis, that's the explosion. Mm -hmm. uh, the lava, creates lava. You know. And then see the lava, it's kind of like liquid when it comes out. Not totally liquid. But you know, but it turns into a solid later on. It's kind of like what we were saying about mud and cement. Then, when it rains, land turns into it turns into mud. Land land turns muddy when it rains. Tlawota, nigal stehon, you gone or not? Tlawota, mud. Nigalstihon turns into, evolves into Nigalstihon. See, always, see that O-E? Then you got Yuganana when it rains. Yuganana. Okay, the next one, Unchi. Kanesotla. That's sleet and snow. Unchi or Uncha is snow. In Kanesotla. That's sleet. Okay. That comes out, that, that's what I was talking about a while ago. It, it's solid when it comes down, but then when it gets so far, you know, it hits the ground, it kind of just melts into a liquid. So, you know, there's your change there. Okay, you do gonna wasa unchi uncha kane soitla amo nidigalsti hoi kane soitla. Amo, the gastion, uncha. Okay, amo, that means watery, turns to watery. The gastion, the that means they both. They're both including one word here. The gastion. Okay, tluka, tree. They, they turn that into uh, paper. Tree would be uh, longer rigid or it's solid. So they, so they, in the meals, you know, they turn into a paper, which turns in, into a flexible, right here. Trees are made into paper. And I think that concludes this right here. Anybody got any questions about anything? Oh, on the, okay, on that little, I forgot. Uh, they're on the bottom there. If you want to, you can try kind of think of some things that are flexible, you know, like cloth and paper and so forth, or a crown about the melt that's flexible and liquid, you know, water and stuff like that. Long and rigid, be like pencil and so forth, log. And living, you know, be like ourselves, insects and uh, animals, stuff like that. In neutral, like I said, something that turns into something else sometimes. And one of the things they talk about neutral is a uh, like this phone here and this pen here. Okay, this is pretty obvious. This is a uh, long and rigid. Okay, when it's laying here, Gia. 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 It's lying there. Gia.
Kadoga, but it's still long and rigid. Kadoga. Just like your pillars, stuff like that. Long and rigid. Or trees. Okay. Cell phone. Now, we cannot say that uh, well, it is laying there. You can't say cell phone laying there, or but you can't in Turkey. Typically, really, you can't say the phone is laying there. You're just saying it's placed there. It's placed there. Asla, asla. But like the pen, <clears throat> even though it's standing up or if it's laying down, you cannot say asla. You gotta say jia. Okay. And like, say that's water. That's not empty ball there. Okay, gadoga. But it's flexible though. But you still gotta say gadoga on that. And if it's laying down, if it's laying down, that ball is laying down. It's the same as saying asa, asa. It's laying down. And, or, you know, cell phone, if you want to say it a different way too, jia, also too. Asa, jia. But that's not really, uh, it's better to say asa, something that's on there. Or, Oh, that's a, I had a racer all the time, ain't I? <laughs> I thought it was a mouse. <laughs> anyway, that eraser there, it's, uh, it's neutral, you know, it's, uh, it's kind of round and solid, but asla, oh, it's on the table, asla, oh, it's, it's on the table, asla. Oh, you can't really say jia. As a long and rigid, ah, uh, tla. The flexible, ah, uh, tla, ah, uh, tla. Okay, you new okay, you neutral. Remember what go would say oh, sa. Oh, sa. Like say that cell phone, oh, sa. and that mouse, oh, sa. Okay, flexible, they're even though they're spelt the same, it's a little bit the uh, how you pronounce it, a little bit different gonna be a little bit different. Ah oh, sa. Oh, sa. It's like it's like putting two A's there. Ah, ah, drag it out. Ah, slump. Ah, slump. They're right there. They're right there. Same thing. Ah, slump. Flexible. Ah, slump. Ah, slump. Ah, slump. Ah, slump. Cell phone, ah, uh, or that eraser, ah, uh, ah, uh, Okay, then on the, uh, let's say some of that water spilled out of the bottle. Ganeha, Ganeha. It's out there. On a table, that water is kaneha. Or, or you can talk about like uh, some of these lakes around here. You can say ama kaneha, ama. There's water there because it's a whole body, whole body of water kaneha. 
Okay, I'm gonna say, you know, of course, it's, it's living, it's living, you know, we got insects and all kinds of stuff, and the living thing, animate, I should say, yes. Okay, and over here, all that, all that stuff laying there, you got liquid, then you got paper, then you got long and rigid, and I'm over here. <laughs> all, that, all that stuff right there. It's plural, a lot of things laying on the table. Just about all the things we've been talking about over here. Uh, I, uh, I believe that's about all I have. Unless y'all want to ask about something about the uh, set A verbs, something like that, the, the stem and stuff like that. We didn't really go too much into that, but, but like I said though, all your, all your uh, stems, We'll go with those uh, the, the top square you have there, prefixes, and with your ending suffixes. And hopefully, maybe uh, some other time that you know we can, I can come back and we can just kind of go over that on the conjugation stuff like that. Oh, and that that's pretty interesting. There's that paper you have that's got that square on there. And it's got the it'll have these on here, uh, first person. See what what you see on your paper there? Those are your prefixes there. Okay. Those are your prefix, and your stem is the middle part. See where where it's got on there? Okay. Yeah. We'll use uh, we'll use that example. Okay, it's already on there. Okay. See how they're on there, written on there, where all these right here can interact with this right here, wanting to talk, plus your, okay. Okay, all these right here can go. All, these, all them prefixes there can be ad adjacent to that warning, then use then all those uh, ending suffixes. Is that what you're asking? Okay, yeah. Then your second person. Uh, Your second person's got that he, sti, and is it eg, right? Eg. Okay, all those three right there, second person, can go to that right there and use all them four, four in the suffixes. See, and what is, here's what I was talking about a while ago. 4, 8, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, just off that, and 20, 4, 8, 12, 32, just off that one stem, 32 of them already. Now imagine 400 of them. 
You'll have to wait till my book comes out. <laughs> yeah, that's how that's how it works with these uh, with this chart you got here. That you find the stem and unit suffixes are conjugating. It's it's pretty fun. I like doing this here. You know, and it's. <laughs> uh, there, there actually, there's eight of these uh, uh, these Indian suffixes. So, just let you know, you're just halfway to. Well, even there's even more actually too. There's a lot to learn, Cherokee. You know, I, I tell people that you know, it'll, them young people, you know, they said you're not gonna learn in about two three years. You're gonna learn. When you're about 80 years old, you're still going to be learning it. You know. It's always going to be there to learn, Cherokee is. Right. All probably Yeah. Right. And so the first one, it doesn't have the yaw. It doesn't have the white eight, but then the other one. Oh, okay. I know what you're talking about. And I was. Well, uh, what happened was that uh, it's not really a difference. It should be there. Oh. It's just that, you know, I couldn't get my. Uh, Oh, I couldn't get my uh, uh, PowerPoint going for some reason. I had it, I had about about halfway down. Then I saved it. I went back, and it wouldn't let me recover. Okay, so it's a typo. Yeah, yeah, it's a typo. It's, it should have y'all on there. Okay. Sorry about that. No, that's okay. yeah. It makes people smart that I caught it then. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> I stand corrected. <laughs> Anyone else? Oh, okay. Way older. Which one now? Yeah, it's supposed to be YA. YA. Mm -hmm. I think it's, she said the first one, I believe. She said. Okay. Yeah, you can just insert that YA there and that'll be all right. Remember our uh, vowel sounds? Okay, all, right? Uh, and a, a, o, and uh, e, and a again, okay? Then all you're doing just uh, remember. So it's Basically, that's what is happening. Okay, if you know your, if you remember your vows, uh, somebody read that for me. Anybody or Dana? Hmm. Okay. Okay. You understand? Do you know what that means? Okay. That's exactly what I was saying a while ago. You know what? My English reading. I could read it. I could read real well, they said, but I didn't know, I had no idea what, what I read. It's just like you, you read it real well, but you know, this is, you know, this right here means, uh, uh, where you been today? Where'd you go today? That's what he's asking. I'd look where Because when you're reading your syllabus, I mean your phonetics, all you're doing, like I said, is uh, just you know your uh, consonant and your vowel sounds, and you can read it. You can read anything, as long as you know your vowel sounds. It takes a little practice, but it, it can be done. Then you can go to your uh, next level. Oh, look where that's going. 
It took me almost a whole year, actually, to, to really kind of master the syllabaries. It took a long time. I always talk about how uh, the reading kind of came to me. I didn't have nothing but just a Cherokee Bible to read off. I'm pretty much a self-taught to how to read uh, the written language and had to figure a lot of things out, listen to people, stuff like that. Had to learn how to drop the vowel, change the consonant to make it sound right. And in that Cherokee Bible, you know, that's, what, that's the only source I had. I didn't know they had Cherokee classes or I probably would have went, I don't know. But uh, my son and I were walking one day and he said, Dad, you speak Cherokee, what's that sign say? I didn't know how, I didn't know what it said. That's when I said, that's what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna learn how to read and write Cherokee. So, I got along further on, and my wife, she worked, and my uh, son went to school, and I was home by myself. So I got to study quite a bit. I was hurt, I, I got hurt on job, about a year, I guess, laid off. And anyway, that's what I've done, I studied all the time, the Bible, trying to learn how to read and figure things out. One day, uh, I was studying, there was, a <clears throat> there was a verse there, I don't know what verse it was, but anyway, uh, I was trying to read it, and I was having trouble reading it. And it took about 10 minutes just to read that one verse. And I thought, well, I'll, I'll take a little break. So I sit back on that couch. And then when I got ready, I, got, I looked back on that, on that uh, Bible, and all of a sudden, all of them looked like them syllabaries. And they all start coming off that book. They come off that book and just start floating around, all them silvers, just floating around. Like, wow, what's going on here? You know, and I kept looking around, you know, and there was this all floating around, and then pretty soon they start disappearing, like bubbles being popped. I said, wow. So I said, well, I'll get back to my study. Then I looked at that verse. I could read it. I read that verse. And it was taking me like 10 minutes to read it. I could read it in less than a minute. I thought, wow. So I, thought, so I flipped the, randomly flipped them pages around in the Bible. And I could read every one of them, anything I turned to. And I'd go back to the front, randomly look through there. Anywhere, I, any, any verse or anywhere in chapter I, I picked, I could read it. And, you know, there's... There's other testimonies like that too, you know, people learning how to read just all of a sudden, just like that. I know there's one person, <laughs> he said, he stuck the Bible underneath his pillow every night, I don't know how long, and he'd get up in the morning, he'd look at it, nope, can't read, so, <laughs> so put it back under the pillow, he can go sleep, next morning, still can't read, <laughs> puts it back. <laughs> he did that, I don't know how many, I don't know how long he did that. Then one day, he said he got, he pulled that Bible out, looked at it, he'd go start reading it. Reading that Bible. Cherokee, all Cherokee. So, anyway, uh, anybody that have a question maybe about just anything? But I'm glad though, uh, I'm gonna get to work over at University of Arkansas and I'm, I'm really happy, I'm really happy about that. And right now I'm teaching high school at uh, Stillwell High School and I teach a 9 through 12, Cherokee 1 and 2, and I teach uh, what they call concurrent students uh, at an NSU at Tahlequah. And I teach them, then I teach uh, uh, um, Cherokee life ways and stuff like that. So, and my Cherokee 2 students, usually, uh, I like to brag about them, because usually by the time they're at the end of their school year, Cherokee 2, they only got two years of Cherokee in there. And they're able to uh, read and write in Cherokee. And I, toward the end of the semester, during springtime, I'll get him up there on the board. I'll recite something in Cherokee, something probably never, they've never heard before. They'll write it out in syllabaries. And I'll tell them, hey, read it back to me. And they'll read it back to me. So there. I like to, I never did get a chance to go to the third level where we would come in class and talk like an immersion, you know. Hopefully we can do that at, uh, at U of A. And so, okay, well, that concludes my part. Right. If there's no other questions, uh, thank you very much. Appreciate it.
we, I printed those other pages for everybody too. Okay. You all, thank you so much. I hope you'll sign up for our newsletter and we have uh, one more in-house event with Eastern Band Cherokee. She's 18 year old. She's award-winning flute pl player. Gabby Nagel will be here in December. And coming up the second Saturday of her month is curated by Cherokee storyteller Gail Ross. And we'll feature Amy Blumel, who is Chickasaw Storyteller. And all of this is on our website. You know, we want to be a resource for all of you to keep learning. And you know, what we do here is we highlight the diversity and artistry of the first people from all the Americas. And Mr. Lawrence, anytime you want to <laughs> bring everybody together, this is your house. So thank you all so much for being here tonight. And I hope we'll keep seeing all of you over and over and over again. So thank you all very much.